Okay, here's our bicycle again with all the parts drawn in. The head tube, the top tube, the down tube, the seat tube, seat angle, head angle, rake, bottom bracket height, chain stay, and seat stay. Let's talk about what some of these numbers typically are in a bike. The seat angle, for instance, normally ranges between 72 to 74 degrees. To give you an idea of what this really means, a steep seat angle, like 90 degrees, would be here. It'd be kind of like sitting on a pile hammer, not particularly comfortable. 72 degree angle, a slacker angle, has you sitting back a little bit more. 74 degrees forward a little bit more. The head angle also usually ranges between 72 and 74 degrees, and it's determined by what the bicycle is going to be used for. If you want a bike that handles a little more quickly, you tend to go with a steeper head angle and a little bit less rake. The combination of those two gives you a faster handling bike. You look to see what the cows are doing in the field and the bike turns with you. 72 degrees, shallower, more rake. The uh, handling is a little bit more laid back, a little bit more stable, something like you might find on a touring bike. The combination of, of the head angle, the rake, and the wheel diameter can all be put together to determine the caster angle. You've probably heard of caster in connection with aligning your car tires. A caster angle of about 81 degrees on a bicycle gives neutral steering. So you can pick and choose your rake, wheel diameter, and head angle to come back to a caster angle. You very rarely see this published though in bicycle geometry charts. Uh, instead, charts tend to concentrate on something called trail, which is typically around five centimeters on a bike that handles neutrally, but the trail is dependent on the wheel diameter. Wheel diameters are all over the place these days. 700C, 650, 24 inches. Trail doesn't mean anything. Caster angle does. Another thing to look at is the bottom bracket height of the bicycle. Typically it's around 10 and a quarter, maybe 10 and a half inches. And by the way, I'm talking about road bikes here, not mountain bikes. Uh, the lower the bottom bracket height, the more stable the bike feels on turns because your center of gravity is lower. You can use bottom bracket height to really cheat on the size of a bicycle, and I'll get into that a little bit later on. The other dimension, and there's no absolute number for it that's right, but it's the top tube length. And this tends to vary. Obviously on a bike for a smaller rider, the top tube is shorter. On a bike for a taller rider, it's longer. One of the things the top tube does is it makes sure that your center of gravity is in the right position on the bike. So that when you're riding, you'd like to have about 45% of your weight over the rear wheel and about 55%, did I say rear? I meant front, 55% of your weight over the rear wheel. The top tube length, if it's too long, you're gonna be reaching too far forward to get to the handlebars, your weight's gonna be back over the rear wheel. If it's too short, you may have too much weight over the front wheel. So the top tube also, you know, rarely does somebody look at the weight distribution, what they're really gonna look at is comfort. They're gonna look at how do I feel when I'm on the bike. Here's the handlebar here. The stem length is this. This is the most frequently changed piece of a bicycle to get the fit of the bike just right. You wanna make sure that when you're on the bike and you're reaching out to the handlebars, your arms have a slight bend in them, you're comfortable, you're not feeling stretched out. You can't really adjust the top tube length of a bike, short of getting a hacksaw out. So you really work at this length and this distribution just through the stem length. You try and pick the stem length that gets you into this position where you're comfortable. Once you reach that, you'll find pretty much that you're going to hit this 45-55% mark. You know, thinking about this, I want to mention something else about this seat angle. Let's go to a little bit of a different drawing here to show something. Uh, you've probably seen this. Here's the seat of a bicycle coming down to the bottom bracket. Here's the pedal right here. Here's your foot on the pedal. Here's your lower leg coming up. Here's your thigh coming up. Here's your body up here. There's a rule of thumb that says if you drop a plumb line off the top center of your knee, the front of your knee, it should intersect the pedal spindle. If it does, this means you're in the right position biomechanically on a bike. If you find that your knee is too far forward, you move your seat back. If your knee is too far back, you move your seat forward. This is another reason why the seat angle 
is so important right here. Because you can see, if this is too steep, your knee is probably going to be too far forward of the pedal. And that's not going to work on any kind of riding over an hour or so. You're going to get pretty, pretty miserable and you're not going to be real efficient about that. So when seat angles start to get greater than 74 degrees, 75, 76, 77, I've even seen 78, watch out for this relationship. It's often said that women have longer femurs than men anyway. So this can really go awry when you start getting into some of these steep seat angles. You should always take a bike out for a test ride when you go to a dealer. It's the only way you're going to know if everything's adjusted properly. You can't tell statically just sitting on a bike in a shop with someone standing behind you holding it up. No substitute for getting out on the road and seeing how it feels dynamically. Makes all the difference in the world. So here it is. Here are the basics. 72 to 74 for both the head and the seat angles. Stem to get you in the right position on the bike. Seat tube length. Make sure when you're standing over it, you have one inch, probably really the very least, up to a little over two inches of clearance. This is on a bike with a horizontal top tube. We'll get into some of this in just a few minutes in a little bit more detail. Uh, and I think in the next video, you'll learn a lot more about frame geometry when you see what a designer has to think about when a bike's being designed.